الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا الدين القويم وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا بربوبيته وإرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي اجتباه وهدى ورحمة للعالمين أرسله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون ولو كره من كره اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمي الحبيب وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين All praise and thanks be to Allah We praise him, we thank him over and over again We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our actions and words The one whom Allah guides, none can misguide and the one whom Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone without any partner with him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, raise the position of Prophet Muhammad more and more and shower him with more blessings along with his family members and companions and all those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. Ibad Allah, usikum wa nafsi al khati'ata bi taqwa Allah azza wa jal wa ahuthukum wa iyaya ala ta'atih. I urge you and myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obey Him and to submit to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe fulfill your duties to Allah as they should be fulfilled fear Allah as he should be feared and do your best not to die except in the state of Islam do not die except in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in order to die in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you need to live in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us do not die except as a Muslim but you don't guarantee how you're gonna die so this means live as a Muslim Live your life in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you will die as a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid O people, you are the ones who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the poor ones. You are the ones who are in need. And Allah is the, the one who is in no need of anyone. Huwa al-ghani al-hameed. He is the praiseworthy subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who is free from any need of anyone or anything subhanahu wa ta'ala. This great creator subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered us with so many blessings, with countless blessings. And all of, of these blessings are for our, our own interest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ اِهْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا Whoever is guided, then he is guided for his own self. And who is misguided, then he has wronged his own self. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ Whoever does good deeds, then it is for his own self. وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ And whoever do bad deeds, then it is against his own self. 
and you will be returned to your Lord for account. Man jahada fa innama yujahidu li nafsih. Whoever strives and struggles, then he has struggled for his own self. Man wa man jahada fa innama yujahidu li nafsih. Inna Allah la ghaniyun anil alamin. Allah is completely free from need of anyone, from need of any of the creatures. He does not need our worship. We need him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِهِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ whoever, whoever purifies his own self, then that is for his own self. And to Allah is our return. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Whoever thanks and show gratitude, then he has done that for his own self. And whoever shows any gratitude, then Allah is in no need of anyone. Allah is the all praiseworthy, the all maintainer, the all sustainer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma yasifun. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of these blessings or part of these blessings He gave us certain times, certain occasions, certain seasons so that we draw ourselves closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of these seasons is, is this blessed month that we are living, the month of Ramadan. And particularly the last 10 days of Ramadan and particularly the last 10 nights of Ramadan and particularly the night of Al-Qadr. Our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make use of these blessed nights. He used to make i'tikaf in the masjid. He used to seclude himself in the masjid completely, dedicating himself for the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, seeking that blessed night, Laylatul Qadr. Imam Ibn Al-Jawzi, Rahimahullah, he is one of the great Hanbali scholars who lived in the sixth Hijri century. He had a book about the, 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 the ages that we go through in our lives, the stages that we go over through our lives. And his book is called, a small book, it's called Tanbihu Naim Al Ghumr Ila Mawasim Al Umr, which means awakening the, the one who is sleeping. The one who doesn't know things, awakening him and making him realize the seasons of time. The, the, the blessed times, the stages of life that we go through. From the introduction of this small book, we read, he said, Alhamdulillah alladhi ja'ala al-a'mara mawasim All the praise be to Allah who made seasons in our lives Seasons of special blessings, special uh, rains of mercy, special gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Divine nafahat, divine uh, breezes of mercy and blessings and barakat and good All the praise be to Allah who made this In these Mawasim, he says, يربح فيها ممتثل المراسم ويخسر المضيع الحسير والحاسم The one who makes use of these seasons will be the one who is successful and the one who doesn't see and doesn't realize these seasons will be a loser. He said, فهي موضوعة لبلوغ الأمل ولرفع الخلل these seasons are made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are chosen are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to so that you reach your goal what is your goal to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know Allah the true knowledge and when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly you will love him and when you love him you will follow his commands 
And when you follow his commands, you will reach the eternal happiness. These seasons are also to make up what you missed of the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for you. To make up what you missed. Then he says, زَائِدَةُ الْأَرْبَاحِ لِمَنِ التَّجَرْ مُهْلِكَةُ الْأَرْوَاحِ لِمَنْ فَجَرْ It increases your account with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, in, it increases your balance. And on the other hand, those who are unaware of these seasons, they will be among the losers. الْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةِ ضَعْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, as our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, the hasana is not written as one. It is written as 10 hasanat, and he could increase it into 700 times, and then it also could be increased to countless and a huge number or a huge rewards by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu wasi'un alim. While, on the other hand, when you do sayyi'a, when you do a bad deed, it's written only as a bad deed. And it's not written right away. You are giving a chance so that you repent, so that you. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. How loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. How merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the shakireen. Make us of those who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, بِهَادَ الْعُمْرِ الْيَسِيرِ يَشْتَرِ الْخُلُودَ الدَّائِمَ فِي الْجِنَانِ وَالْبَقَاءَ الَّذِي لَا يَنْقَطِعُ كَبَقَاءِ الرَّحْمَانِ With this very short period of life, you can get the eternal happiness, the eternal paradise, and you will be in there eternally without any without any death. Then he says, finally, وَمَنْ فَرَّطَ فِي الْعُمْرِ وَضَعَ فِي الْخُسْرَانِ The one who is unaware of his time, of his life, of his purpose, of his goals in this life, then he has truly lost. فَيَنْبَغِي لِلْعَاقِلِ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ قَدْرَ عُمْرِهِ وَأَنْ يَنْظُرَ لِنَفْسِهِ فِي أَمْرِهِ فَيَغْتَنِمَ مَا يَفُوتُ اسْتِدْرَاكُهُ فَرُبَّمَا بِتَضِيعِهِ هَلَاكُهُ So that the, the knowledgeable person should know that the, his time, should realize the time he lives in, the, the month he lives in, the, the seasons he's looking forward or he's expecting to come by that he could have his happiness and by losing that he could reach his loss our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith narrated by imam tabrani and others he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam اطلبوا الخير دهركم كله وتعرضوا لنفحات ربكم وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يَسْتُرَ عَوْرَاتِكُمْ وَأَنْ يُؤَمِّنَ رَوْعَاتِكُمْ Seek good in all of your life. Seek good and get ready for the nafahat of your Lord. That these seasons that your Lord has showered you with, these special times of mercy, of blessings, of good, these special chances, seek those ones, get ready for them, get ready and prepare yourself for them. And in another hadith, it was reported that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maybe one of those divine nafahat will reach you. And with which, with that nafha, with that breeze of mercy, with that season, with that blessing, maybe you will reach your eternal happiness. So do not lose this chance. These seasons, dear brothers and sisters, the most important one of which now, is Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, as our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ It is better than all of your life. Alf shahr means almost more than 80 years. Hardly, very, very few people will exceed 80 years. And you have 15 years in which you are not accountable, or 12 or 13 years. So what's left? So Laylatul Qadr is better than all of your life. Laylatul Umr. It is the night of all of your life. So maybe Laylatul Qadr 
has passed because it is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan it could be in the 21st or the 23rd and we are already in the 23rd day of Ramadan so still you should still keep focused and keep looking forward for that night who knows so you should be in the remaining days of Ramadan in complete focus and concentration and dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart and in your mind and in your affairs if you can make i'tikaf in the masjid that will be great if you cannot make i'tikaf in your heart let your heart make i'tikaf let, let your heart be in seclusion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa used to do this is Laylatul Qadr the one of the, the most important seasons we have to be aware of another season is the day we are in the day we are on friday in a friday we have so many blessings so many things that we can do number one we are recommended to read surah al-kahf on friday surah al-kahf the prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa in many hadith that if you read surah al-kahf on friday you will have light on the day of judgment a huge light for you on the day of judgment where there will be no light you will have light and your sins will be forgiven and you will have light until the next friday if you read surah al-kahf every friday and you can start from as uh, imam shaf and others from the night of friday until the sunset of friday means from the sunset of thursday all the way until the sunset of of friday all you have all this time to read surah al-kahf and reflect on surah al-kahf that teaches you about three things three things it talks about the test of money the test of money the money that has distracted many of us from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't let your money distract you from Allah. Don't let your money make you arrogant and forget about your life as Allah tells us, tells us the story of the, the, the people of the garden or the one who had his garden and he showed off against his own brother and he forgot about Allah and he disbelieved in Allah. The other test or the other trial Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Kahf is the trial of knowledge don't think you know everything don't think all what you know what you know is correct so you need to seek knowledge and you need to benefit from knowledge and you need to go to those who have knowledge the third test in surah al-kahf allah tells us about is the test of authority the test of power so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you have, if you have power, you have to use it in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Kaf is full of, of lessons and full of blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through revealing to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and guiding him that we are recommended to read this surah, there are so many blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to repeat every Friday. This is the first season, the first blessings. The other one is making a lot of salah on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the position of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam more and more and more every now and then he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam make a lot of salah on me on friday friday day the, the day of friday and the night of friday means starting from thursday evening and until sunset of friday not make salah on the prophet only sallallahu alaihi wasallam no that should be your daily word that it should be your daily adhkar part of your daily adhkar and dua no he's saying make more salah on friday make a lot of salah on friday and he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam because your salah and your dua will be shown to me will be shown to me they said how will it be shown to you and you you will be under the dirt and your body is gone 
He said, no. إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ عَلَى عَلَى الْأَرْضِ أَنْ تَأْكُلَ أَجْسَادَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ He said, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the earth to eat up the bodies of prophets. These, special, these are special people. So they are, as he as narrated about him, وسلم, that he is living and he is fresh, his body is fresh in his grave. He passed away from this life, but he has a special life, just like all other prophets. So his body is there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And your salah is being shown to him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some of our shaykhs told us that by name, by name, your salah will reach him. Imagine and think of this great blessings. The angels will tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so and so made salah on you. So and so made salah on you a hundred times, ten times, thousand times. Imagine, how is your feeling? How? Think about this great, great blessing and try not to lose it. Put your family, your friends, whoever, sit and make salah on the Prophet ﷺ. Make salawat on the Prophet ﷺ. Ask Allah to raise his position more and more. That is for you. When you make salah on him one time, Allah will give you ten hasanat, will remove ten sayyat, will raise you ten darajat, ten levels, ten ranks. This is what he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is for you, not for him. And the third, the third season on Friday is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made on Friday an hour, means a period of time in which any Muslim asks Allah for good that he wants. Allah will give him. As the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari and others, that the Imam Muslim and others, there is a time on a Friday in which whatever you ask, whatever good you ask Allah for, He will give you. And the scholars, they have based on the many hadith, they have two opinions about the time of, of that hour. Some of them said it is when the khatib of Friday, when he sits between the two khutbas. And the other scholars, they said it is in the towards the, the sunset of Friday, means after Asr time, from Asr until the end. So again, it is, as some scholars said, it is like Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us specifically what night Laylatul Qadr is. Why? So that you remain seeking the blessings and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all the last 10 nights. If Allah told us specifically, then all people will just focus on this night and forget about the other night. Also, this hour on Friday is not 100% determined again because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be directing yourself to Him on Friday, making dua to Him, supplicating to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen the speech and follow its best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and accept from us and make us of those who realize the seasons and the blessings that he has showered us with. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين the other, the last season I'm going to mention in this short time that is remaining is the night of Eid. The last night of Ramadan is the night of Eid. Meaning the evening of the last day of Ramadan. This night is, we are recommended to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do different types of worship in, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night as all the fuqaha, the vast majority of the fuqaha of Ahl sunnah the Shafi'is and the Hanafis and the Malikis and the Hanbalis, they say it is preferable, it is preferable to 
make Ihya of Laylatul Eid, the night of Eid, the night of Eid, and there's, there are many hadith, one of them, some scholars consider them unauthentic, but the others consider them authentic because there are many narrations, and even if they are unauthentic for those ones, we are recommended according to the vast majority of Muslim scholars to make use of those chances even if the hadith is unauthentic. Even if the hadith is unauthentic, when it is in a certain level, you can act upon that hadith and not lose that hadith because there is a big possibility that the Prophet ﷺ said it. And there are tabi'een, one of the righteous, some of the righteous predecessors, they used to be aware of this night and make use of this night. Like Imam Shafi'i radiallahu anhu, that he is one of the followers of the followers of the Prophet ﷺ, the great Imam of Ahl Sunnah. He said, that we heard and we received the news that Dua is responded in, in five nights and he mentioned the night of Eid, the two nights of Eid among them. The hadith is mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever make ihya of the, the Eid night, if you worship Allah ﷻ in the Eid night, even for one hour, even for a short time, his heart will not die when the hearts die. لا يموت قلبه يوم تموت القلوب Whoever do that, whoever does that, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, محتسبا, just like Laylatul Qadr, whoever makes Ihya of Laylatul Qadr, إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه If you celebrate Laylatul Qadr, seeking Allah's reward, believing in Allah, then your sins will be forgiven. The Eid night, if you celebrate the Eid night by worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether by yourself or, to, or with your friends or with your family, as Imam Ahmad radiallahu anhu, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, he said, in one of his opinions, it's okay even if you do it in a group. You make some dua, you, you pray to Allah, you... So, if you do that, your heart will not die when the hearts will die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect your heart from corruption, especially in the eight days where many Muslims, they forget about Ramadan. Because they were not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in Ramadan, but they were worshipping Ramadan. So when Ramadan is gone, they are done. When Ramadan is gone, they are done. But a Muslim, no. He keeps worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he increases the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Ramadan because he learned from Ramadan. He graduated from the school of Ramadan as a taqi, as a pious one. He reaped the fruits of Ramadan that will serve him until next Ramadan, minimum. So, also some of the understandings, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this, this is what it came to my mind that your heart will not fear when the hearts will fear. On the day of fear, Yawm al faza Yawm al faza your heart will not fear. Because Maut al-Qalb also, it, it is a metaphor of fear. So your heart will not fear, you will be secure on the day when people will fear. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tranquility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secure us and save us from the fear of that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are aware of these blessings, who are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our siyam, accept our qiyam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the position of Prophet Muhammad more and more, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and shower him with more blessings along with his family members and companions. Allahumma. اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسن اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع طريق مجيب للدعوات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار 
اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما بارك لنا فيما بقي من شهر رمضان أعنا فيه على الصيام والقيام وغض البصر وحفظ اللسان أعتق رقابنا من النار اجعلنا ممن يبلغون ليلة القدر وممن يكونون من المقبولين يا أرحم الراحمين وممن يكونون عندك ذوي قدر برحمتك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم فرج عن المسلمين والمظلومين في كل مكان اللهم عليك بالطغاة الظالمين المستبدين في كل مكان اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولمن علمنا ولمن ربانا وللمسلمين أجمعين Oh Allah forgive all Muslims and believers men and women the dead and the living ones Oh Allah give speedy recovery to all those who are ill Oh Allah have mercy and shower your blessings on those who passed away Oh Allah forgive us our sins overlook our shortcomings accept from us our siyam and our, our qiyam and help us to be of the thankful ones and of those who realize the special blessings that you showered, when, showered people with. O oh Allah, make us guides and guides, make us guided and guiding to others. O oh Allah, purify our hearts, enlighten our minds, forgive our sins, unite our hearts, unite the hearts of Muslims everywhere. Give relief to all the, who are suffering everywhere and render them, make them victorious over the oppressors everywhere. صلي على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون